Um, so, good afternoon again, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar on digital transformation for SMEs. Uh, my name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of a new age consulting firm called Consolidon. Uh, new age in the sense that we didn't take the traditional consulting firm model. We didn't grow like a traditional consulting firm. So rather than you know hiring a lot of consultant, what we did was we partnered with a lot of subject matter experts from boutique consulting firms. So that model helped us grow very quickly from 2017 when we set up till the end of 2019, we already had more than 500 consultants. Uh, we'd already delivered about 200 consulting projects across the Gulf region. Our main focus is the GCC, the Gulf region. Um, and we were really looking forward to 2020, of course, uh, like everyone else. 2020 was gonna be a great year, right? I mean, it was the turn of the decade. It was uh, going to be uh, great, but unfortunately everyone knows how 2020 turned out. Uh, after we recovered from the initial shock, right, from March and April, what we decided to do was use our excess capacity to help small businesses and micro businesses get back on track. So every consultant at, Cons at Consolidon spends 20% of their time in connecting mentors or business leaders from across the GCC region with small businesses and micro businesses uh, to help them uh, help and support them get back on track after the downturn. It's a project we call the Superheroes Project. Uh, in 20, uh, 2021, we decided also to start helping slightly larger organizations by bringing uh, subject matter expertise. Uh, we decided to do a web summit, a seven day web summit called Connected Insights, which are now all a part of. This is day six of the seven day summit. On day six, we have, uh, or Across the summit, we have about 50 webinars and panel discussions uh, and six workshops, right? Uh, today's webinar is a particularly import, uh, important as well as an interesting one by Anita uh, from Fidgetal Now. A um, couple of quick housekeeping points before she starts. Uh, one is, we've, as you can see, we've made you all panelists. And the reason for that is we want you to interact with us during uh, during today's uh, meeting, right? So if you have any questions, feel free to put them onto the chat. Uh, after Anita is done with her presentation or even during, just raise your hand using the raise hand feature on Zoom and you can ask the question and Kanika will ask uh, the question. I see somebody trying out the raise hand feature. So you can untry it as well now, if that's okay. Um, and then uh, look out for the giveaways on the chat, right? So. On the chat, there are a few giveaways. For example, we have a workshop in the evening tomorrow from 5 to 8 p.m. Dubai time. It's a paid workshop, but to three people who are attending today, we're giving them uh, free attendance to that workshop. We're also inviting speakers for the next edition of Connected Insights. This is the first edition. The next edition is going to be in May. So we're inviting speakers. So look out for that form, which will come to you during today's discussion. So that's about it from me. Thank you everyone for joining in from Mauritius, from Egypt, uh, from Lithuania and from Dubai and Sharjah and other places I'm sure. And I'm handing over to Anita. Uh, looking forward uh, to, to the discussion, Anita. Thank you, Varun. And hello everyone. I hope you've all had a good day and not too tired. As Varun mentioned, this is an important topic. I think quite uh, pertinent in today's scenario digital transformation for SMEs. I'll be talking about some of the essential steps that you need to take for you to earn the right to play in the digital economy and some steps that you might consider them to be excess right now, but are in fact required for you to grow in the digital economy. So my talk today is going to be answering three questions. Why are we talking about digital transformation? Is there an urgency for digital transformation? And what's the roadmap of this transformation? And how can my company, Digital Now, enable your business to transform? So before we talk about digital economy or digital transformation, let's just look at the world economy. And Varun just mentioned that earlier about 2020 being a bad year, a challenging year and that the numbers reflect that. But the good news is that 2021 is going to be much more positive. 
According to IMF, there's going to be a 5.2% GDP growth globally. And in our region, it's going to be 3% and comparable to other regions, except for Euro and developing Asia, which is at a much higher percentage. In terms of global e-commerce revenues, that is also on the rise. I must say here, however, that the numbers are looking much higher now, according to some of the recent reports I've been reading about, but the sectors that contribute to this uh, rise and this growth will remain the same for the years to come. And Rajiv, you mentioned about toys. It is one of the sectors that adds to the growth of the e-commerce along with fashion and food and personal care. But in the Middle East region, we can add one more sector, which is the electronics. It's one of the highest traded categories in on, online in the Middle East. Now let's look at our own market, apart from the global market. According to about 1,000 CEOs who were interviewed by Emir Advisory Council in December 2020, uh, this council is run with Ministry of Economy. They looked at the sectors and felt that all sectors are on a slow recovery path. And a sector like travel and tourism, which has a knock-on effect on other sectors in our region and in our market specifically, is the worst affected. But however, the recent reforms that the government has put forth like the multiple year entry visa or multiple entry visa for the tourists or the vaccination drive itself will surely improve the sector. But however, will it actually go into the positive? That's something that we'll have to wait and see. The reason being, there are multiple challenges that the businesses are continuing to face on ground. This is according to PwC Middle East report, they have looked at it as two types of shocks, demand side shocks and supply side shocks. And then looked at how they affect heavily, moderately or lightly across various categories. I'm going to just focus on retail because much like the travel and tourism, which has a knock-on effect on other sectors, retail is another sector, especially for our market, UAE, that has a knock-on effect on other sectors. If you look at retail, the demand side shocks, it's about reduced consumer propensity to spend and reduce government propensity to spend. Retail has been affected by both. But one factor on the supply side shock, which is the erosion of competitive advantage, you can see here is that retail has not been affected much by it. And there is a reason for it. Many of the retail brands quickly adapted to the digital ecosystem and thereby increasing their competitive advantage. However, retail has been affected severely by supply chain disruptions and productivity inputs. The same senior leaders that I spoke about earlier, they, however, believe that digital transformation will be a key catalyst for increasing business demand. And here, when you talk about digital transformation, it's not about owning a website or running social ads or Google ads. It's actually much bigger than that or wider than that. It's about adopting technologies like 5G, AI, cloud, or blockchain. It needs to be depending on the scope and scale to determine what technology you must adopt and to achieve what results. That is important before you choose the technology. And the UAE as a market is prime for digital transformation. If you look at the numbers here, whether it is the internet access or the time spent online daily or the smartphone and social media penetration, you see that UAE performs much higher than all other markets, even including mature markets like US which is why in UAE, digital transformation is a given and it also accelerated the adoption of e-commerce. 
The chart here looks at the next five years growth, especially due to COVID. And you see that there is a 6% additional and annual growth in the next two years. And after that, another 4% additional annual growth in e-commerce. And the good news is that along with Saudi, it is UAE that is leading this growth. What COVID has also done is that it has fast-tracked online shopping across categories. You can see grocery and pharmacy, which were around 30% before COVID, is now at around 70%. So is fashion, even luxury fashion. And this will continue even post-COVID, 80% in Saudi and 52% will increase in, will have an increase in online purchase even post COVID. All this means that SMBs on the whole has adapted to the disruption pretty well. This is according to a, a research that was done by Visa in December, 2020, and they published it just a couple of days ago. 58% offered home delivery and pickup services, and 38% adopted digital channels, and 40% to improve the safety of shoppers, they implemented in-store self-help signage. And we have all experienced the last point, which is one in two running promotions or offers. And what it also, what the survey also says is that SMBs have confidence in digital economy. 20% of UAE merchants who currently don't have any digital presence plan to build an e-commerce platform. And 86% expect e-commerce will continue to grow even post pandemic. So my first question, is there an urgency for digital transformation? I think the answer is pretty clear there is an urgency and we must do it now. However, remember, digital transformation is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It has to be done in a structured manner, in a timely manner, the right steps at the right time. And as I mentioned earlier, it goes beyond just having a website or running few digital campaigns. It is part of digital transformation, but it's not all. We at Digital, uh, Digital Now, we believe in four levers of digital transformation. And that is customer, architecture, reach, and transact. In fact, this is the basis of our framework as well, which I'll talk to you about in a little while. Let's look at the customer lever. It's not just about having a, a good sales and marketing ecosystem. It's about looking at the source to store journey, optimizing that journey. Source being the supplier you procure your products from, if you are a retailer, or um, if you are a manufacturing unit, who you procure your ingredients or your parts from. That journey comes with a lot, lot of roadblocks, which I'm sure you all have experience. We use data to analyze that journey and look at ways to optimize where the roadblocks are, where the blockages are. In the architecture lever, it's about offering your customers a omnichannel experience. It's about them moving from one channel to the other seamlessly between sales, marketing, and even non-marketing channels. Reach is a lever that currently many of the brands focus on, which is about communication, brand building, moving your brand from the customer's mind to them actually buying it. So that ultimately in the transact lever, the primary reason for digital optimization or digital transformation, which is optimizing for profit margins if you are a retail client and for inquiries if you are a business to business enterprise. What I'm going to focus on is on the customer and the reach lever in terms of what are the essential steps, as I mentioned earlier, that earn you the right to play in the digital economy, and what are the excess steps that you need to take to earn the right to grow in the digital economy. When it comes to the 
uh, optimizing the source to store journey, moving from a physical only infrastructure to a digital infrastructure is an absolute must. A, uh, a combination of your physical and digital destinations, because that is how you are able to then collect data and use that data to further optimize that journey. It can be four basic steps, as I have mentioned here, which I'll take to you one, one after the other, but there can also be other steps depending on the scope and scale of your business. So the fourth basic steps is starting with customer segmentation. You don't want your customers who are currently selling or buying from your physical destination to simply migrate to a digital channel. That's not growth. What you really need is two separate segments and optimizing them for physical and digital. When it comes to product prioritization, it's about having digital specific SKUs so that your physical destination can become a, a destination for experience. Like for example, if you are a retail brand, you can have your daily fast moving items on the digital channels, but your high value items that need more personal attention can be at your physical destination. Supplier prioritization, this is where data comes into place to see what are the revenue efficiency each supplier brings it to the table. And you can even partner with them for last mile delivery. And the last step is an absolute must, having a digital specific pricing, whether it is bulk order pricing or bundle pricing, these are essentials so that you are able to fully realize the potential in a e-commerce economy or a digital economy. But how do you grow in this economy? This is when you adopt technologies that we mentioned earlier, artificial intelligence or machine learning to construct a digitized single customer view profile. What it is, it's an aggregation of different data points of your customers from their basic demographic details to behavior patterns. What that allows you to do is that when you combine that data with product, you're able to identify new customer segments. Let's say a customer segment is outdoor enthusiasts with passion for photography. You can actually create a product line for them, of course, if they are valuable enough and there is volume there. Similarly, you can combine the customer data with price and look at new revenue streams. For example, if you have a high volume of customers that are buying low value items, you can spin off onto a new brand completely. And through combining customer data with supplier profiling, you can even enter new markets. If you have a regional supplier with a regional outreach, and you realize that there are some products from that supplier that you are able to create a high potential customer segment, you can target the similar to target similar customer segments in other markets and enter the new markets through the distribution network of your supplier. So this are, these are some of the excess steps that are required to grow in the digital economy when it comes to optimizing the source to store journey. The, the next lever, which is the reach lever, where we talked about share of mind to share of wallet, here again, there are some essential steps and excess steps. Essentials is all about perfecting the basics. Now that might sound simple, but it's not commonly observed. We look at three different stages in the um, awareness, consideration, and conversion in this uh, lever. And for that, Awareness, it's about communicating a distinctive brand promise, about making sure that you have a, a blueprint for your brand, what are your values, how those values are aligned with your customers' values. This is what is required in the awareness stage. So that in the consideration stage, your customers are able to choose your brand over your competition. And one of the 
most effective ways of getting that consideration uh, for your brand is through your existing customer base, which is why developing a digital community of your current customers is important because when they share their reviews and their views about your brand, that has much higher salience amongst the customers than what your brand itself says about yourself. This again, coming to the third um, stage, which is the conversion, it's about maximizing conversion opportunities through some personally relevant tactics. It can be as simple as offering a, a, a special discount on a special day for the customer. Now, if all brands perfect their basics, how are you going to protect the future? This is where you raise the game and make sure that you invest in, in the awareness stage, not just a brand building activity, but also invest in owned or curated content, like blogs, creating hashtags that are specific to your brand or user-generated content. One brand that does the hashtag campaign quite well is Coke with their Share a Coke campaign. You might have seen them with uh, people posting pictures of bottles, I mean, na bottles named after their, their own names, and that adds to the virality of the brand. Similarly, in the consideration stage, you can increase the consideration for your brand by adopting or attracting another celebrity. How many times have you picked up a brand which because one of your celebrities has been talking about it or using it. Now, not every brand can, um, can afford a celebrity, but you can go with a micro-influencer who has maybe not as big a following, but the small loyal following. In the conversion um, stage, it's about establishing a demand forecasting framework using, again, machine learning and our artificial intelligence, and having a fulfillment framework by partnering with companies that offer maybe drop shipping or even drone technology, if there is volume for that, or your, your product has enough value for that. But digital transformation is not complete without a sound measurement framework. And this is where we have developed few proprietary indexes, but what I'm presenting here is a basic format because it needs to be tailor-made for each business and each company based on how they uh, monitor their success and how they measure their inventory or their um, various customer data. So let me give you the first two indexes, which is on the customer lever. One is monthly new customer acquisition, and monthly inventory attrition index. Now, all these matrices need to have a target that you set beforehand based on historical data and based on what your annual objectives are. Now, the monthly new customer acquisition, it's pretty straightforward. But the monthly inventory attrition index is something that we have developed in at Digital Now, which gives you the health check of your inventory using your POS data, like your Zoho's data. Similarly, in architecture, it's top channel with highest conversion index and month-on-month -month revenue growth. For REACH, the most important aspect in a digital economy is how high you rank for the keywords that you have chosen in the search engine results pages for your priority one keyword and priority two keyword. And channel with the highest ROI index. Similar to monthly in inventory attrition index, we've also developed a cart value index, which is proprietary to digital now, that gives you the health of the cart, whether it is the physical cart of your physical destination or your online uh, uh, shopping basket. And uh, the usual, what everyone looks at for to understand the value of your customer, the lifetime value index. Now, this is how the roadmap looks like, but how can we as digital now help you with that roadmap? As I mentioned, our business framework, CART, which is powered by machine analytics and of course, human intelligence, 
is based on four levers that we just spoke about, customer, architecture, reach, and transact. In the customer lever, we will help you orient your business towards your customer. You might have heard of Amazon boss having an empty chair in the meeting room and saying that represents the customer and he or she is the most important person in the room. We will help you get a similar focus on your customer so that we are able to identify who your most valuable customer segment is and the most valuable product and supplier list is by looking at the business opportunity, new business opportunities and reorganizing the product portfolio. When it comes to architecture, it's about adopting the right technology solutions, not too much, not too little, so that that are in line with your business needs so that you're able to enhance your user experience and advance digital maturity. When it comes to reach, it's about a e communication ecosystem that identifies primary, secondary, tertiary customer target audiences and the communication framework to reach the right audience with the right message at the right time to deliver the maximum return on investment. And the last lever, which is the transact, is about uplifting your revenue potential using multiple models to analyze your shopping basket data and advice on conversion optimization techniques. This is the framework that we use to help and advise companies to transform digitally, but it all starts with an audit. What this audit does is to check as to what your digital maturity currently is at. The audit looks at, again, the same framework, customer architecture, reach, and transact. But in customer, it's about segmentation. How have you segmented your customer? Is it through behavior? Is it through revenue or marketing? And infrastructure, how robust is your infrastructure? How is your website? How is your tech and data layer? What is your social channels ecosystem like? And for communication, how are you using our content? How are you using SEO? And what is your paid media strategy? And in comparison, that is for Transact, it's about comparing what you have done before to what you want to achieve using what we are advising as the transformation in terms of ecosystem, basic optimization, CRM. Now, to give you a peek into what this audit looks like, I would like to share with you six questions from our audit to simply gauge where you are currently at in terms of digital maturity. Kanika, if you can just launch the poll, please. The, the poll, as I said, it's six questions. So the first question is, does the revenue by each customer exist? And if yes, have the segments been created based on that? You can rate yourself as to absent or below par or excellent and industry best. The second question is, are the products mapped against each customer segment? segment? Again, the same scale. The third question is, are your social channels generating traffic to your website? The fourth is, do you have a data management system to track and analyze returns on investment for your marketing and communication activities? Fifth is, have you added a layer of remarketing to target cart abandoners and website visitors who didn't purchase? And the sixth is, have you created a loyalty program to retain customers? It can take about a minute or so.
is that all? 13 of you have participated in the poll. So if that's all, then we can end the poll right now, uh, Kanika. Okay. So I'm going to just read out the results. I mean, considering it's uh, only 13 of you, so most of you have satisfactory or excellent when it comes to customer segmentation. And uh, in terms of products being mapped against, that's uh, again, majority have excellent and some have even industry best, which is excellent. And your social channels generating traffic. In some it is absent, but again, there is a four of you that have excellent when it comes to that. Ha uh ha. -huh. But when it comes to data management system to track and analyze, that is majority are below par. Now, this is where we say you can do everything right, but if you have not invested in the right technology, to analyze what you are doing, whether it is do, whether you are doing it right or wrong, then it does not give you enough insights to build into the future. And have you added a layer of remarketing? Again, this is something that is almost fundamental in terms of e-commerce is remarketing. So that can be improved, of course. And have you created a loyalty program? Um, we have seen that it, it works really well. And to have a, a large loyal base of customers, it brings in new customers far easier. I'm going to just stop that right now and then tell you how we go about when we look at the um, audit. So the audit right now, it's only six questions. We actually have about 35 questions on the audit. And that gives us a pretty good understanding of the digital maturity of the client. So what we offer are three types of consultancies. So the first one, when you, when you are, if the audit gives us a score of less than 25%, we give them a business transformation consultancy that works across all the four levers, customer, architecture, reach, and transact. And those clients that already have a good customer understanding, but do not have a good communication or an infrastructure setup, so those who score between 25% to 75%, we offer them a digital acceleration where we advise them as to how, how to better the digital infrastructure and how to better the communication framework. And those who already have a good customer and a communication framework and a robust architecture, but for some reason is not seeing the revenue that they expect from the infrastructure, we offer a revenue optimization consultancy where we advise them as to how best to improve the conversion um, techniques. And I would like to share with you an example as to how we advise uh, based on the audit. So this is a client who scored 10% on digital maturity, obviously very basic. So we realized that the client has a pretty good customer understanding, but they hadn't segmented the customer enough or in the right manner through revenue, through marketing, through behavior, because only then you will be able to better inform the marketing and the communication strategy. In the architecture, they had no, no uh, infrastructure at all. So we advised them on the fundamental data and analytics layer that was required to measure and optimize the marketing performance. In the reach, we realized that that particular client needed an always on content and media deployment because only then the brand awareness and the recall could be built. And for Transact, they were, it was absent when we audited them. So we advised them on lead nurturing and remarketing required to drive conversion. So this is how the um, audit and therefore the recommendation uh, we propose 
and then we work with them using the essential steps, focusing on the essential steps, and then giving them a timeline as to how, when they can take on the excess steps so that it is not a roadmap for one year, it is a roadmap for two, three years, or sometimes even five years. Before I conclude, I would like to give you a little bit about myself. I've been in the industry for 34, 30, more than 30 years, starting in India and then reached Dubai in 99 and since then here. Of course, when I started, it was only traditional media, there was no digital. But I have been an early adopter of digital integration with the traditional media from all the agencies that I've worked with. And I have led on multiple advanced data analytics, basically to demonstrate what is the media influence on business. And I have developed multiple customer personas for various brands from fast moving consumer goods to even financial products. What I've realized uh, after having handled many brands is that the rigor that I used to handle these brands is the same rigor that I need to handle even a smaller brand or an SME brand. Which is why when we founded our company, we put, selected our values as on time, a timely advice and action to achieve maximum impact among customers. On target, we will always be on target with what you want to achieve through digital transformation. And on purpose, which is our collective commitment to deliver results with transparency and integrity. And as a concluding offer, the audit that you just saw, I would like to offer that as free to any of you who would like to know what your current digital maturity is like, and therefore you can start your digital now journey. Now let me complete this presentation with just two examples of digital transformation. And these are sim quite simply achieved. In fact, a couple of uh, brands here have already using it. One is the in-queue checkout so that people don't have to wait online while uh, to pay and then uh, you know they can pay while standing in the queue because the, the shop assistant will come with a device and you can pay through that device and get get yourself out of the store in no time. And the second is the Nike Speed Shop where you are able to shop online and store the, the shop will then store the items that you have shopped in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a cupboard so that you don't have to ask around or look around for those items again. That's how uh, the digital transformation works in a couple of examples. This is already being tried out in some of the shops here like Sharaf and Carrefour. And uh, if, in any of your brands that you might be doing this in one way or other, the digital transformation, but perhaps maybe not in the same structured manner, or maybe you are doing it in the structured manner. <laughs> And I would like to hear from you as to how your digital transformation is like. And if there are any questions on my presentation, I would like to answer them as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anita. Anita, before I open for questions, what I'd like everyone to do is, if you don't mind, please uh, you know, switch on your videos. Let's take a photo for memory that we were all here as well as for social media, of course. So if I could request everyone to please switch on your videos. Let's take a quick photo. Uh, Anita, if you can end the presentation for a second. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. I see some smiling faces. If everyone can fix their hair. And I will... Uh, I will... Click in about 10 seconds. Just give me one more minute. Perfect. And let's say this time, let's say one, two, three digital. Okay. So one, two, three digital. Digital. One more minute. Sorry. One, two, three digital. Perfect. 
digital doesn't bring out the same kind of smile that you would with cheese but it was too topic so if anyone has any questions uh, you know we're still around any questions for anita any comments any experiences that you would like to share how you did your digital transformation if you're in an sme um, uh, there's a question around can we get a recording of the video session absolutely on our website summit.consolidon.com all the recordings will be stored there uh, so we'll send it to you all by email as well but any questions any thoughts comments um there was a question uh, anita for you if you can share the 35 questions that you mentioned yes yes so that will be the free audit that i've offered so whoever has asked the question can reach out to me uh, over linkedin or at uh, anita@fitchtilnow.com and then i can share the audit questions with them any other questions or thoughts padi i think has a question padi khalil yeah yes yeah uh, hi can you hear me yes i can uh sorry actually i'm i'm riding um because i have to run to a meeting uh but it, thank you very much for this presentation it's uh, very helpful actually i would say um i'm i'm talking on behalf of the financial sector where i am an employee in the bank so i'm heading the large corporate actually i'm not, not from the dsmes but uh you know now it's it's very essential to know exactly how we can move forward with the dsmes uh, sector towards the digital transformation it's it's very important matter first of all we have to convince the dsmes um, uh, companies itself to to move and to shift to to the digital especially uh, in these days where the covid um, has its own impact on all of the dsmes sectors in addition to how the bank um, can uh, insist on that and moving forward um, within our systems within our platforms you know exactly how the blockchain and fintechs and the ai and the machine learning has it's also again it's it's impact um, on the companies itself and the financial sector itself so um, the digital transformation is very important also to to the banking sector to uh, to move forward in that sector and to compete um, i would not say to compete with the fintech there is no uh, competition and there is no comparison to do that they have the full information um generated by the clients but while the bank or the banks um, are not allowed to do that um but again uh, so we have two missions to transform ourselves as um, as uh, as a bank as a lenders uh, in in addition to convince um, our uh, companies um, to to move forward to, towards that uh, so yeah it's it's uh, it's about uh, a comment and again how we can um, how we can move forward in that um, in that matter if you have any view about that sorry Sorry yeah. for the it's long, but... no, that's good no in in fact in fact uh, uh, i don't know whether you caught the slide but one of the slide that i presented was from visa which i mentioned that they just published it 3 3 days ago and they mentioned that the digital payments and the trust in online payment is at a all time high right now because of the necessity that people had to shop online and therefore they overcame their hesitation to spend and Uh, by online using digital payments and online payments so therefore your sector is the key to have the e-commerce grow at a rapid pace and because one of the drawbacks in the uh, e-commerce earlier used to be the as i mentioned the people's hesitation to pay online so and sometimes the cash on delivery it does not work um uh, always so i think your sector and the how you help the smes and one of the things that i have always um, uh, advised the especially the payment uh, sectors is that to offer the smes a, a good uh, uh, system uh, or a good uh, payment system or a good uh, uh, financial uh, arrangement for them because what happens is sometimes the the charges that the uh, payment gateways um, uh use uh, for the sme sector can be little deliberate uh, limiting for the sme sector so i think that is important great thank you there's a question from shekhar uh-huh. uh, he's asked what is the recommended software for crm especially for e-commerce 
So the CRM can be on, I mean, the, 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 the POS system is what is most important for the e-commerce and which is the Zoho system is something that many of them uses. And the CRM, there are multiple options over there, but I am not the right person to give you the, which one you should go for. I can give my quick thoughts on that, if that's okay. Yeah, um, yeah, please do. Would... Because I'm not the right person to give the recommendation for CRM. Yeah, so my, my, my thoughts are, first, do a proper analysis of what your exact requirements are, okay? CRM systems have several modules, right? So uh, a typical CRM system will have a sales module, uh, will have a marketing module, will have a conversations module because you have conversations with your customers okay and you need to see what is the what is the best it would have like a chat bot kind of thing it would have something to manage your email inboxes right and what you would need to do is uh, you would need to see what is the best for your particular use case okay the ones that i found most useful for smes because they're quite reasonable and they have like free to start uh, kind of uh, options are hubspot and zoho we, we use HubSpot and we've used HubSpot for the last four years. They have amazing discounts. I, I don't know if I should say it over here, but I, I will go ahead and say it. But they have amazing discounts for startups. Reach out to me if you're considering a HubSpot kind of CRM. I can tell you how to get good discounts for startups. And in the first couple of years, we had like a 90% discount. I'm sure Zoho has the same. I haven't used it, so I don't know. But no, Zoho, I'm, I'm absolutely sure. But... Uh... I, I'm not sure on CRM because I have not uh, I have not personally used any and I have not personally advised any of my clients on CRM as yet. Sure, sure, sure. I think the most important thing is I've evaluated a lot of others. There's some very, very interesting CRMs out there. There's one called Streak CRM with, uh, which sort of uh, uh, tags to your Gmail. So everything that comes from your... Uh, email goes directly into your CRM. And in fact, you manage most of the CRM entries from your email itself. There's quite a few interesting ones out there currently. But look for a free solution when you're starting off. Don't pay necessarily, in my view, right from the start, right? Anyone else with any question? We'll wait for a few seconds and if no questions, then we'll say yeah. thank you and close out. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, don't think there are any other questions. So thank you so much all for attending. This is day six of the Connected Insights Web Summit. Today was the last, uh, this was the last event of today. We have about seven more panel discussions and webinars tomorrow. We have one more workshop, so please, uh, look at our website summit.consolidon.com i'll type it out in the chat if you need to attend it if you'd like to attend any you can easily register from our website thank you so much everyone for your time there you go i've typed the website on the chat yeah thank you thank you everyone for joining thank you thank you Mamta, and thank you everyone else thank you thank you thank you <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Bye.